uh, then I would like to pass the pass the presenting role to Mr. Jakovos Yakumis. Can you hear me, Jakovos? Can you unmute yourself? Yes, yes, I hear you. Please, please start your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning to all. Uh, my name is Jakos Yakumis. I'm the CEO of uh, Monolithos, uh, Catalyst Recycling Innovation, which is an SME based in Greece. Uh, my company is, uh, is experienced in manufacturing, recycling, and generated uh, catalytic uh, devices, including uh, automotive catalysts, diesel particular filters, and uh, selective catalytic reduction systems, the well known at Blues. Uh, the aim of the, the objective of today's presentation is to present you the two aspects of InnoCAD project. InnoCAD project is, in, uh, is, uh, for, is uh, an article for uh, innovative uh, CRM substitution technology for public authorities vehicle catalyst. So, what is the whole fuss for this? Uh, firstly, I would like to, to share with you the partnership uh, of the project. Monolithos is the coordinator, uh, and as I told you, we are located in Athens, Greece, and there are 12 different partners of eight different countries, more, uh, which are all located in a rich region. Rich region, according to European Commission and eight raw materials and the European Institute of Technology, is the, the regions in Europe that they are moderate in innovations, in, meaning that they, even the, uh, though they might produce a lot of innovation, in uh, universities, uh, research centers, and even in companies. They are behind in uh, demonstrating them in the public uh, sector, in the, I'm sorry, in the, in the wider sector from, through it, uh, through companies and, the, and uh, municipalities or regions. So, uh, for Europe, these regions are mostly the Eastern European regions and the Southern regions of uh, Europe, uh, like Greece, South Italy, Spain, and the whole Eastern uh, region, including uh, Hungary, Slovenia, Slovakia, uh, Balkans, and Poland. So, um, all our partners, they are coming from, from these regions. So the objective of the project is to diffuse innovation for the recycling and substitution of platinum group metals in automotive catalysts, particularly heavy duty vehicles. And with this, to reduce the emissions of the toxic gases and the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Uh, the, the project aims in developing uh, pilot applications for retrofitting of heavy duty vehicles. I will uh, tell you why heavy duty vehicles uh, in the next slide. And then to diffuse these innovations, both the retrofitting and the recycling of platinum group metals with policy recommendation and roadmaps for the Eastern and Southern Europe. The final aim, and uh, this is what we are doing today, is the capacity building and matchmaking for the beneficiaries of the project and development of key beneficiaries, businesses, and startups uh, throughout Eastern and Southern Europe. Okay, what is the raw material? The raw materials are the metals and minerals that we extract from uh, the, the ground, we mine them, uh, in order to, to produce our everyday uh, appliances, like electric appliances, mobile phones, electric uh, computers, uh, cars and the parts of cars. One of the parts of the car is the automotive catalytic converters and the diesel particular filters that they are used in order to control the emissions to the environment of the toxic gases. The key component of the catalytic converters is the platinum group metals. Uh, we all know them as noble metals, including uh, ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, osmium, iridium, platinum. Uh, these metals, they are not mined in Europe, so we don't have mines in Europe. We all, all of these metals, they are imported from Russia, South Africa, and South America. And they are very rare, and, but they are very hard uh, in the, the catalytic activities. They oxidized very slowly. So uh, they are very, very good catalysts. That is why we use it in our everyday life as catalysts for cars. And why heavy duty vehicles? and why particularly the public heavy duty vehicles. Uh, the population of heavy duty vehicles in the roads of Europe, it's only 
However, the missions they are they, they have to, we have to play them for the missions of 33 percent of the pollutants in Europe. Uh, since what is normally done for uh, for this kind uh, kind of vehicles is that uh, in most municipalities throughout southern and eastern Europe uh, they make a very short mileage per year. For, you can see that the garbage collector they might be only they might do only 15 kilometers per day. So their, uh, their life is very prolonged, even more than 20 years. In this case, in, uh, following this uh, prolonged life, uh, these uh, trucks, they do not follow the, the emission uh, standards uh, as they are put by European Union. So most of them, they emit too many toxic uh, gases in the uh, in environment. And what are, are the toxic gases? The toxic gases are the carbon monoxide, the hydrocarbons, the nitrogen oxides, and the particular matter, the smoke, that this kind of uh, cars are emitting to the environment. Uh, 20, uh, the, in the emissions of uh, these uh, heavy duty vehicles, 12% 12 per, 12 is carbon dioxide, while the oxygen um, uh, is uh, 9%. Uh, this particular value of the oxygen uh, to, in the emissions of diesel cars make it uh, very difficult for us to treat the, the emissions of the, diesel, of the heavy duty vehicles uh, since they, they, they have a very big excess of oxygen and carbon dioxide in their flue gases. Here is a schematic diagram of uh, up to date today, Euro 6. Uh, Heavy duty vehicle emission control uh, after treatment emission control uh, system. As you see, uh, it is uh, it is uh, consist it is consisting of three different catalysts uh, in order to take uh, three different roles. The first catalyst is the diesel oxidation catalyst, which is in the beginning of the after the engine, uh, which is like a normal catalyst in the light duty vehicles, like the catalyst we have in our uh, cars, but it is ten times bigger. This catalyst is uh, put there in order to reduce carbon monoxide emissions and hydrocarbon emissions. And its other function is to appraise the temperature of the emissions because all these uh, uh, reactions are exothermal in order for the diesel particulate filter coming next to work properly. Diesel particulate filter, even though it's called a filter, in, in the, uh, it is a catalyst. Uh, that uh, it is used in order to to lower the emissions of the carbon of the uh, of the smoke that it's it's created by the diesel uh, the heavy duty diesel engines. Uh, this smoke is uh, reacting with uh, oxygen in order to produce carbon dioxide, and that is why we have elevated carbon dioxide uh, emissions. Uh, since, as I told you before, we have elevated oxygen uh, concentration in the system, uh, thermodynamically we cannot uh, reduce uh, nitrogen oxides to nitrogen, so we, all these cars, all these vehicles emit elevated uh, amounts of nitrogen uh, oxides in the atmosphere. In order to, to, to cope with this problem, uh, the manufacturers, uh, in, in order to comply with Euro 6 standards, they had installed an, the Amplus system. This is the commercial, uh, the commercial name of this system. And uh, this is a system that we inject urea. Urea is a solution of uh, ammonia in liquid form. In, in one catalyst that it's called the selective catalytic reduction catalyst, which is, which is a tax and manatum catalyst. And this catalyst with the injection of urea is capable of reducing nitro nitrogen oxides. The problem that has been creating, from one end we are solving the problem of nitrogen oxide emission, from the other side we, we create another problem which are the ammonia emissions, which is toxic uh, for, the, for, the, for the human in elevated emissions. The other thing that it is done with all the system, as I uh, described it, is that it is very expensive and uh, the, the vehicle manufacturers say that 50% of the total cost of a diesel engine is the, is the cost of the after treatment of uh, emissions. So this is a very expensive system and that is why the, the municipalities uh, and the public sector does not want to change uh, the, the vehicles 
uh, in order to buy newer ones that they cost 150,000 euros in most cases, uh, in order to comply with emission standards. What we are doing in Inocat? In Inocat, we have two different uh, processes uh, that we are taking care. The first one is the recycling. Uh, and the recycling is in order to get back the asset all you in the beginning, the platinum group metals contained in catalyst uh, are not mined in Europe. So we have to import them. So the recycling of this kind of metals, it's very important for European economy. And that is why we have, they have been uh, uh, labeled as critical raw materials, the platinum group metals, because the only source we have in Europe for this kind of metals is the recycling of secondary uh, feedstocks like catalyst. And the second uh, process we are uh, dealing with in Inocat is the retrofitting of old uh, heavy duty vehicles with uh, new catalytic emission systems in order to, to comply with higher emissions, uh, in stricter emission systems, uh, even though the track is old. Going first in the recycling of the, of the catalyst of uh, of uh, heavy duty public vehicles. Uh, what we did is that we uh, tried to establish a new recycling process because there is no commercial process in the recycling of platinum group metals from this kind of catalyst. And this is why the, they have elevated uh, concentration of smoke on the catalyst and elevated uh, concentration of volatile organic compounds. So, if you try to pyrometallurgically or hydrometallurgically treat this kind of compounds, uh, you have a, a lot of problems due to the fact, due to the presence of these elements. Uh, that, what we did in Monolithos is we tried to use our uh, standard uh, hydrometallurgical process for recycling of platinum group metals from uh, petrol cars uh, that we have uh, already uh, established and upscaled. And we try to find the key factors that we have to change in order to, to tackle with the, the recycling of platinum group metals from uh, heavy duty vehicles. Well, uh, what we found, as you see in, in, uh, up in this uh, slide, is the different steps of the recycling. What we did is we added one, uh, one uh, step uh, uh, that it is the thermal pretreatment of this kind of catalyst. As you see in the left, in the, in the sums of catalyst, how the, the sums are looking before the thermal pretreatment. They have this smoke on them, so they are either brown or black, depending on if they are a catalyst or is a filter. And after the calcination, the thermal pretreatment, uh, uh, they take the, the color of the, of the catalyst, as it is in, in the beginning, meaning that uh, after the calcination, we we'll go in a state like the normal uh, three-way catalyst, we are processed uh, very efficiently. So, with this uh, thermal pretreatment, we put out the all organic compounds in order to make the, the recycling. The six different factors we have uh, optimized during the uh, InnoCAD project is, as I told you, the, the key one. We found that this is the key factor, the thermal pretreatment of spent catalyst. The second one is the key factor for industrial application, which is the solid to liquid ratio, meaning how much uh, uh, solid catalyst you put uh, per liter of, uh, so of uh, solution. And this solid to liquid ratio should be the highest possible in order to have the lowest possible of uh, waste or in order uh, to manage or to, uh, to recycle after that. The third uh, 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 parameter was the acidity of the solution. We examined the uh, solutions from 3 to 6 some uh, hydrochloric acid. The fourth uh, parameter was the, the concentration of hyperoxide uh, oxidant. And we made tests uh, from 0.5% to 3% per volume. And then the, uh, we made tests for the alternative uh, chlorine uh, source. Uh, instead of uh, hydrochloric acid, uh, yes, uh, which uh, we made uh, different tests from 3 to 6 m. And finally, we tested the time reaction from, uh, for half an hour to three hours in order to see when the reaction is uh, finalizing. Here are, in brief, some of the results. 
uh, the most important of them. And uh, you examine here that uh, with the pretreatment of the catalyst, uh, what we found out is that we can recover 40% uh, more catalyst for uh, PGMs uh, with the, the pretreatment uh, if uh, compared to what we would do without the pretreatment. So you see in the end, in the second, uh, this second uh, table, that if we use all the parameters established, already established for the three-way catalyst, which is uh, S2L ratio 70%, hydrochloric acid acidity 3Ms, 1% uh, uh, hyperoxide of oxygen, and 3.5 Ms of uh, chlorine addition uh, through potassium chloride, we have a, a recycling of 95% of uh, the platinum contained in this kind of catalyst. And here is our upscaling. We upscale our process, the specific process, to bigger quantities. You see that we can, uh, in the lab, uh, we use 700 uh, grams of catalyst in the third photo for one liter of solution. And we got 95% of platinum from diesel oxidation catalyst using this uh, upscaling process. So the optimized conditions, as I told you, is the calcination. We need calcination. We need a, a, a low acidity hydrochloric acid, uh, 3Ms. We have solid to liquid ratio up to 7, 80%. 1% uh, or a drop of uh, hyperoxide uh, added to the solution. And 3.5Ms of uh, potassium chloride. The recoveries are extremely well. Uh, for diesel oxidation catalyst, which is 95%. And for diesel particular filter, which is 75%. The good thing about all this is that uh, there is no other competitor. Uh, there is no other competitor in process since no one is treating uh, heavy duty uh, catalyst and DPS due to the smoke they are containing uh, commercially. And uh, the other thing is that uh, they contain a lot of PGMs, even though. Uh, they contain uh, more or less 10 times more PGMs than a normal catalyst of a car. So it is a very concentrated secondary feedstock that will be, can be used in order to, to, to as Europe, to produce uh, PGMs in order to use them in different applications. Going in the second process of Inocat is the catalyst-based control, control emission system is what we do in order to treat the emissions in, in a more environmental friendly way without the addition of uh, urea, of, uh, of ammonia. Uh, our, uh, our schematic diagram of the system that we are, uh, we are using in order to make the retrofit is that we substitute uh, the diesel oxidation catalyst with a three-way catalyst uh, in the, before the diesel particular filter. And then we put, an, instead of urea adding, uh, an, a membrane. We call, them, we call it the Oxygen Reduction System, ORS. And this membrane has the capability of removing oxygen and carbon dioxide from the emissions of, uh, diesel, uh, of heavy duty reacts, diesel heavy duty reacts. And after that, we have a reduction catalyst like in normal cars. Uh, the other aspect we are using is that in all catalysts involved, we substitute the platinum group metals uh, up to 85% with copper. And this is uh, a patented solution we have uh, developed in uh, Monolithos called Prometheus, and uh, it has been patented before. So in Inocat, uh, we upscaled uh, all catalysts, our Prometheus catalyst. You see the patent uh, in the bottom of the, of the slide. From one liter, which is the, the normal catalyst for uh, passenger cars, to 10 liter catalyst, which is the normal catalyst for uh, heavy duty vehicles. And you see in the right, uh, a reactor of 150 grams, uh, kilograms, uh, that can uh, produce a higher, uh, higher uh, quantities of uh, nano materials. Going to the ORS, and why we propose ORS in this kind of systems. As you see in the diagram, uh, this is the diagram of the term, how the concentration of the different uh, uh, gases uh, affect the, the, the working uh, conditions of the catalyst. 
as you see with the uh, white yellow, uh, white uh, line in the in the middle of the diagram, this is the window that the catalyst is working. Uh, this is the window that the the oxygen uh, concentration should have in order all uh, all reactions to take place in the same time. So uh, what we need is to reduce the oxygen concentration of the of the flue gases in order to reach this window in order for the catalyst to be able to work. And here it goes the ORS system. This is our uh, lab uh, scale development of the ORS uh, system. It has already been patented uh, from 2019 uh, in the European level. And uh, to be short, it is a stainless steel membrane like the one you see in the, in the middle of the slide. Uh, that has been impregnated with uh, eothotic uh, mixtures. Uh, this uh, membrane is an electrochemical membrane that uh, by, uh, by tra uh, transferring the carbon dioxide and oxygen uh, atoms to ions uh, has the capability of putting out of the, of the flue gases the carbon dioxide and oxygen. Uh, we have uh, developed uh, a laboratory testing facility, a synthetic gas bench, which is simulating the diesel uh, emissions from a heavy duty vehicle in order to test different membranes in order to have it, it upscaled for the uh, big, uh, for the scale of the track. We made a series of, uh, of different uh, experiments with a series of different uh, kind of impregnations, as you see here. We normally use mixtures of lithium, uh, potassium, and uh, calcium. And we, we, last month we presented and we published some of the results in the VI 2020 conference that uh, was organized by the University of Mexico. Okay, and now the, are the results in the lab scale. You see that we have found that uh, the binary ternary mixtures with the additions of uh, more molecules of uh, calcium barium ions have the ability of lowering, of reducting the oxygen from uh, flue gases by seven, 65 to 70%. And this is very good in order the, for the catalyst to work. But at the same time, the same mixtures have the ability of lowering the carbon dioxide uh, emissions uh, of uh, fuel of diesel uh, emissions of uh, heavy duty vehicles of 70%, meaning that we have a zinc membrane that could reduce carbon dioxide and oxygen, uh, giving us multiple advantages in order to use it in, for the utilize for both using a normal catalyst in diesel uh, in the heavy duty uh, diesel cars and in uh, using the carbon dioxide we we separate from the flue gases in order to utilize it, in order to make fuels or chemicals and uh, stop it from being emitted in the environment. Going to the, up in the full scale now, um, we upscaled in these two years the whole system in order to be retrofitted in different uh, tracks. Uh, in the course of Inocat, uh, the retrofit should be done in uh, tracks of uh, Eastern European countries and uh, Spain. And this is uh, some uh, exams of the tracks from uh, Slo uh, Slovenia and uh, Serbia. The first uh, pilot we did was in Greece, uh, in the municipality of, uh, of, uh, of the wider Athens area. And as you see here, the, the track is quite old. This track is 20 years old. It's a garbage collector. However, it has only 300,000 kilometers. And for the track, the 300,000 kilometers is very small mileage. So no municipality in the South and Northern Europe are changing these tracks because they have at least uh, five or 10 years uh, life uh, due to the manufacturer. So the retrofitting of this Euro Zero, this is a Euro Zero track to, uh, to go from Euro Zero to Euro Four or to Euro Six is a very big uh, thing for the emissions in cities. Since, as I told you in the beginning, 33% of the emissions are due to these tracks. And here in the, you can see before the retrofit, uh, what is the silencer? And after the um, retrofit, that we, we replace the silencer 
with the catalyst and uh, how it looks. So our conclusions uh, in brief, uh, starting with the recovery and uh, the, uh, the recycling, is that we during KinoCat we developed and upscaled a novel uh, recycling technology that it is not in a commercial field, that it is able to recover 95% of platinum uh, from diesel oxidation catalyst and 75% uh, of platinum from diesel particulate filters. Now we are in the in the way of uh, making an industrial process of one uh, cubic meter uh, in order to be able to to to, to treat uh, more than one uh, one thousand uh, kilos of catalyst. Uh, regarding the ORS and the, and the retrofitting of the old cars, uh, we developed in the laboratory. We patented and we published uh, our new stainless steel uh, membrane. Uh, you, you see here which is the best uh, system we found. And uh, by this membrane, we are able now to, uh, to reduce 65% of the oxygen and 75%, 70% of, of carbon dioxide from the emissions of diesels. We, upscale, we have upscaled this procedure, meaning that we have put multiple membranes in the signal device and we have uh, retrofitted, we are in the process of retrofitting uh, trucks uh, in Greece and uh, in the InnoCAD project. So, to conclude, uh, InnoCAD, and to thank you for your attention, uh, has already developed two different processes. Uh, one is patented and published. The second one uh, is now being published uh, from, uh, from Monolithos. And the final aim of this is to of the project is to show that uh, even uh, though that the, the 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 fleet of the eastern and southern Euro, uh, European countries, uh, municipalities and regions are very old, they can be uh, green and they could uh, uh, reduce the emissions with a small cost for the public authorities. Thank you very much for your attention.